This week in NBA 2K, it's time for you to vote for my team's 2K moment of the month. Check out the NBA 2K My Team Twitter so you can choose a new moments card that will be available next week. And it's time for a new throwback pack. Check out these historic players from the Cavaliers and Nuggets to help expand your collection. Amethyst, Terrell Brandon, and Spencer Hayward are also available in these packs. So get out there and improve your lineup with these new players. and welcome to this week's episode of NBA 2K TV. This weekend, we'll wrap up the final qualification rounds for the 2K Pro-Am All-Star Tournament, and we will finally have the 32 teams locked in and ready to fight for that championship title. So joining me again in studio, I have Scott OG and Chris Manning. Thank you guys for coming on and getting ready to talk more 2K Pro-Am All-Star. It's about that time, thank you. Yes, sir. In round four, the teams that qualified, we have Stage Gods, ET Reloaded, The World Esports, Miamiville, Pro Era, and Team Final. But it was another crazy end to the round because in the last 10 minutes, we had a group of teams, Sharpshooters, New York Next, The Bad Boys, Pud Nation, Underrated, Road to Legends, and GFG were all at one point in the top three, but got knocked out before the end of the round. So was there anything, Chris, that surprised you about this round? I mean, it's just the format is kind of bringing a little dramatic flavor to the tournament, right? It's given an opportunity for these other teams to sneak in, and unfortunately, these other teams to get knocked out. So I think the surprising thing to me was seeing some of these well-known teams kind of get bumped out for some uh, new faces in the tournament. Yeah, they're just finding a way to get in. I mean, the talk of the town right now is the format, you know, and I think it's mostly that these teams that get right to the cusp and don't get in, but to me, that's just a loser excuse. It's the same for everybody. You know, do what you gotta do, winners win, commit and get in. Of the teams that qualified in round four, which team impresses you? Chris, how about you? For me, I think the team is Stage Gods, and the reason being is because we're seeing players migrate over from other game modes. For example, a controversial park player, Nade TNB, is performing on this team, trying his hand at pro which is really interesting because he's a predominantly popular my park player. So now you're seeing these park players, you're seeing my team players like Kuda come migrate over into the tournament, and I think that's really exciting for esports and NBA 2K. A few teams that didn't get in but made the tournament last year, I mean, GFG still hasn't made it in. One of your favorites, Bad mm -hmm. Boys. Yes, yes, the Bad Boys. They lost the top notch 68-55 uh, uh, last year's quarterfinals. They had a lot of good uh, games. And again, I, I keep going back to stories, seeing some of these teams, familiar faces come back and you know, maybe they can climb and get to the final this year. So I'm pulling for them. GFG, uh, we've talked about them so much, but same five as last year. They're competing, they're right on the cusp. I mean, they got knocked out in the final 10 minutes of the last qualifying round. And here we are at this point in time, one more qualifying try for them. But I think they will overcome what they need to overcome. And I think they're gonna s squeeze in there at the end. And tomorrow we will find out those last teams that will make it into the tournament. Can't wait. Till then, let's check out some top plays. Are your four contenders for the top play of the week.
can submit your best plays through social media using the hashtag 2KTVWOW. with Scott OG and Chris Manning to talk more All-Star Tournament. And every week we've been trying to speak with a team member from one of these qualified teams. And this week we have a member of Make It Happen. So our team name Make It Happen, that's what we plan to do. All right, the guys I am playing with, met them about a month ago. We ended up matching up with them and then we formed a team together. I played a, a sharpshooter at a small forward. Just playing the team owner, Sherm two times, he played a point guard position. Real Reezy, he's our shooting guard, sharpshooter. Then we have a, a stretch big, Day Fry, and our center, Spit. It really wasn't even that hard to get to get to where we're at now, honestly. Like, we all clicked as soon as we got together. Like, the chemistry, the IQ was all perfect, and we just went from there. Like, it really just all clicked together. It was real easy with these guys. Like, on offense, we take we take it real slow and stuff like that, and try to get the best shot every shot from me, every possession. But defense, that, that's where we, like, really excel at. We run a 2-3 a two three defense, but it's kind of like a man defense as well, because we don't just stay in our zone. Like really anybody that comes near us, we try to like bump them and all that all the time, anytime we can. You're everywhere all the time. I'm definitely the voice. Like I put the whole team together. I call out plays and stuff like that, everything. And they listen, like that's what makes us like a good team. We all listen to each other. Like they tell me things as well. We all just listen to each other and we all just play really well together. It's just, it's perfect. To get in a, on a qualifying day to get 10 games and we started as soon as it started and we were just, like we, we run a fast offense. So we were putting up points in, in a hurry and the game was just flying by. We didn't try to foul a lot and stuff like that. And then next thing you know, we have got enough time to get one more game in the last couple seconds to pass up a couple teams to qualify in the last like 40 seconds, literally. Team that we got our eye on, definitely Juke and Barker's HD. Cause just cause they have Styles with his experience and Cole's also on the road to finals on that team and a couple others, that's like the top team that we're worried about the most and that we want to keep playing like practice on. We feel like they got a good chance of making it again. So that's definitely the team. We're doing a prep, we're just playing a lot of, a lot of comp games against all the top teams, we get as many games as we can in, lose or win, try to learn what we can from those games. That's what we have been doing. I mean, we took some down and we lost to some, lost to some, but it's, it's been worth it. Hopefully we can keep it up throughout the tournament as well and win it all. They have a unique story as well. They're team just got together not too long ago. Yeah, it's really interesting to hear about the players behind the gamer tags. And one thing I really liked about what he was talking about was he said they have chemistry. They listen to their leader. Gotta have that alpha dog, gotta have that leader. And one thing that's really dependent on good chemistry is when these games break down and maybe things aren't going your way, it's to stay the course. You have one chance in this tournament of qualifying and going on to compete for $250,000. So the teams that stay the course, I think are gonna be more well-disciplined in this tournament. But is there they're going to be a different course when you get into that final tournament than these qualification rounds? Good question. Uh, something that he mentioned was uh, he talked about that they go into a 2-3 zone and they treat it like a man. So for the people out there, he's basically talking about a matchup zone. And I love the matchup zone. Matchup zone is instead of you just being stationary in a 2-3 in your set zones, is that you can handle cutters. So you can chase a cutter. So if there's a really good shooter up top, you can chase and replace, basically. This is a really good scheme uh, and that with the Pro-Am and what I've seen, there's not enough patience. And that's why they're 103 and nine. People are usually one pass and jack it up, or they're trying to find one particular guy. They can stay in that zone and cause a lot of problems. I really like that. Staying the course, again, what happens when that doesn't work? Now you're facing the best in the world that know how to break this or run a lot of ball screens. This is something that they're gonna have to be aware of going forward, so we'll see. This isn't the first time that we've heard of a team starting, at least, in a zone defense. Mm -hmm. I feel like this zone is kind of a trend this year. It is, yeah. It's, it's interesting that you say that. And it's a lot of this, it depends on like ego too, right? Like, are you going to let one guy just score 50? Or are you gonna try to put two on the ball, trap them, uh, and you know, get the ball, make somebody else beat you? There's two different philosophies on how that goes. I also think archetypes play a major factor into that. You have things like stretch bigs now, so maybe not your traditional bigs like we saw with the Jukabakas just last year that were pounding the ball down inside, but you have bigs that can now shoot on the perimeter, so the zone rotations and communication is key there. I think defense is gonna win this tournament. A lot of defenders out there I know are chomping at the bits to kind of neutralize some of these scoring type of my players, which is great on YouTube, 
but it's going to be interesting to see what these archetype builds are going to be in the tournament and eventually who's going to win that 250k. What about the rivalry that was just talked about with the Drew Grabachers? The Drew this, this is not the same Drew Grabachers. No, it's not that the same. We saw last year. It is not the same Drew Grabachers, but anytime that name is associated with the championship, so they got the bullseye on their back and uh, people are going to try to take them out. Tomorrow is the last qualification round, so we're not even sure yet if that Drew Kerbacher team is going to make it into the tournament, but let's talk about the wild card factor. The Drew Kerbachers have actually held the wild card spot for I think like two or more weeks. It's another piece of the format that I love, and it's another way to get in. This wild card is about a team that stayed the course. This is not just, oh, hey, in week three, they're the wild card. They've been consistent all year right there, and you know, we'll see if they get in. As stressful as it is for those wild card spots, it gives them a chance to compete like any other team who's qualified. Because once you're in, like last year, it was truly a Cinderella story, we talked about it. Like the Drew Kabakers, really, in a lot of people's minds, were not going to win this thing. Everybody had GFG winning. GFG had the winning attitude. That would definitely be another interesting story if they came in and went all the way like last year. But we have a lot of storylines coming in this year. Are there any in particular that you're really excited about. Top notch talking trash about uh, D Loading Squad. We saw him on the last episode of 2K TV talking about how he's gonna remember that in the back of his mind. There's a good chance that those two teams potentially could meet up in this tournament. And I think whenever you have a chip on your shoulder, just like in the NBA, it makes matchups more interesting. And then the other one, uh, Vibrancy Gaming actually is calling out SJ Esports in their arena. But I know if those two teams match up, there's not gonna be a lot of love lost there. And then again, on the personnel side, there's like Almighty Dunk find a team, or is this like <laughs> this kind of troublesome free agent? A lot of people kept saying to me, he was one of the best players on the team last year. Like, what's going on? There's a lot to think about when $250,000 are on the line. Sometimes these arguments, you know, prevail and you end up, you know, pulling it out. Yeah, you're not here to make friends, you're here to win and yep. win big. And on that note, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Scott, for joining me once again in studio. And guys, next week we'll be back with more tournament updates and Aaron Gordon will also be on the show next week. So that's all that we have for today and we'll see you next time.